Glad to have you with us this week for UND Sports Extra. I'm Alex Heinertz. Well, as you know, the University of North Dakota football team has had their fair share of close contests this season. As entering this weekend, all five of their games had been decided by seven points or less. But if there was a game left on the schedule that some would peg as a chance for UND to break out in, most would have circled the trip to 1-4 Sacramento State as the one to do it. On Saturday night in Northern California, Bubba Schweigert and the fellas did not disappoint. To the capital city of the Golden State for homecoming at Hornet Stadium in a 6 p.m. Pacific time start. It's a late one for UND who has now played in four different time zones in six games. First quarter now and after stopping Sac State on the opening drive, look at this punt from the Hornets' Nolan Merker. Josh Seibel decides to let it roll and the ball gets downed inside the one yard line. Not ideal field position for your first drive, but the visitors did not mind. On first down, Brady Oliveira right up the middle for 14 yards and UND gets it rolling. Two plays later, Keaton Studsrud fakes the handoff to Oliveira on the read and takes off 44 yards before he is finally shoved down along the Sac State sideline. Two plays later, nobody follows Luke Stanley on the out route, an easy 18-yard pitch and catch to make it first and goal. And then one play later, Studsrud with his legs again, dancing in for the six-yard score to cap off an eight-play, 99-yard drive. Reed Tavenheim's extra point would be no good, 6-0 North Dakota. Next drive for Sac State, unique play here. Cole Reyes nearly comes up with the interception, only for Johnny Rucker to make the grab and then proceed to shrug off half the UND secondary on his way to a 52-yard gain. North Dakota's D would step up from there, though, to force a 33-yard field goal attempt, and it is blocked ever so slightly to keep the Hornets off the board. Watch it again here. Dylan Bacher just gets his fingertips on the kick. Still 6-0 at this point. Now, if you remember from last week, John Santiago played two downs against Cal Poly before leaving with what looked like a severe ankle injury. Most didn't think he'd play in this one, but most would be wrong. John picks up 21 here on his first carry from scrimmage at the end of the first quarter. More coming from him a little later. Same drive on the other half of the quarter break, and it's Keaton Studsrud again. Second rushing touchdown of the ball game for the junior quarterback, this time from 40 yards out, 13-0 North Dakota, and they would just be getting started. Two drives later, UND back in Sac State territory, and it's Santiago. Great blocking up front, and John scampers in from 26 yards out. 21st career touchdown for John, his fourth this season. He would go for 76 yards on the day on just eight carries. Late second quarter, Noah Johnson, who played at Sac State for two seasons, makes his former school wish he had never left. Johnson gets the strip sack on Nate Ketteringham. Mason Bennett recovers on the UND 40-yard line with just over a minute left in the half, and then Studsrud goes back to work. First play of the drive, he finds freshman Travis Toivonen for 34 yards deep into Sac State territory, and then three plays later, Oliveira. Brady Oliveira rolls in from 17 yards out with time on the clock to spare. 27-0, all UND at the half. More of the same after the break. Studsrud here hits DeMond Mercer for a 41-yard gain into Hornet territory. Season highs for Mercer in this one with three catches for a team-high 57 yards. And then later in the drive, Oliveira finishes it off with a one-yard plunge. Five touchdowns now on the year for Brady, all coming in the last three games. 34-0 at this point, and there would be no comeback on the way from the home team. UND earns their fourth straight win. 40-7 is your final, the largest margin of victory ever for UND over a Big Sky opponent. Great offensive numbers on the night all around as North Dakota postseason highs in total offense, rushing yards, and rushing touchdowns. Plus, Oliveira, Studsrud, and Austin Gordon all eclipsed the century mark in rush yards, the first time that's happened at UND since 1995. We just stuck to the game plan. Each and every week we came out and gotten better and better uh, mentally and physically, just kind of knowing uh, where your eyes got to be and whatnot. And the uh, O-line made a big jump this week, uh, really kind of knowing where to go and whatnot. And I thought they all played a great game. But, uh, you know, just everyone staying focused, staying with the game plan and sticking with it. There's a lot of them times in the game where as soon as I got the ball and I'm like, 
All right, thanks guys up front. I mean, that's all where all the things got to go to the guys up front. I mean, with all those guys, nothing, none of this would happen. So I mean, I want to give a big thanks to them. They've been improving each week. I mean, it's just great. It's good to enjoy this win and everything, but you know, next week we got a very good opponent in Southern Utah, and pretty much the next five games are going to be tough. So you know, it's it's a great win tonight, but number one thing I would think too is not to go in next week thinking we're just going to dominate. You know, just prepare like we did all the season so far. The wins keep on coming for Bubba Schweigert. We'll hear from the head coach coming up after the break. UND Sports Extra on Midco Sports Network is presented by Farmers Union Insurance and the University of North Dakota. Welcome back. Well, here in studio after catching the red eye back from Sacramento this weekend, head football coach for the University of North Dakota, Bubba Schweigert. And I'm guessing a nice trip, uh, not a, uh, a trip that you ever look forward to, but to come back that late at night after a nice 40-7 to victory has to feel good. Well, it was a good trip. I was really proud of our team, the way we handled it. You know, night games make it a little bit of a challenge because you sit around all day on the road, and especially when you're on the West Coast, mm -hmm. you know, it started at 8 o'clock our time. Uh, there were some moments in this game, obviously, when it was still in doubt, certainly, but your first drive to get the ball at the one-yard line, go 99 yards in eight plays, that had to really set down a marker for your team and for the opposition as well, just to start the season on that kind of a note. Well, it was uh, an impressive drive by our guys, and I think it all started with the first play. We're on the one-yard line backed up, and we run it out of there for 14 yards, and that really got us rolling. And then to you know, take the ball and go 99 yards for a score early really helps you and gain some momentum in the game. Yeah, big tone setter for this game. Offensively started really strong. Defensively as well, you held them to just five first downs in that first half. What was going well for your defense in this one? Well, third down was huge for us. On the night, we were 12 of 15 on third down. And if you can force punts and get the ball back, especially the way we were running the football, you know, time of possession is huge for us, and it was really big in this game. Yeah, you, you're number one now in the big sky. In that statistical category, you had 13 more minutes of game time with the football than they did in this one. Running the ball, obviously, a big part of that. You rushed for, what, 422 yards, 247 of that in the first half. I'm going to push you for a number. Where does that rank? I mean, running the football, how big is that on your success chart? Is that right there at the top? Well, it's number one. We yeah. want to run the football and control the clock, you know, and... Uh, what gets lost in this, the second half, we controlled the ball for 19 minutes yeah. with the lead, and that's very important because you want to shorten the game and give them as few as possessions as you can. A big part of that rushing attack this weekend, which really was a, a four-headed monster between Brady Oliveira, who was over 100 again, Austin Gordon, who stepped up and had a big game running, Keaton Sudzard was over 100 yards, but John Santiago, a little unexpected after we all saw him go down last week. When did you find out that he was going to be good to go, and what did you see from him on Saturday? Well, we made the decision in warm-ups. We thought we'd take him with on Friday because he really it was coming around Wednesday and Thursday, and, and then in warm-ups we felt like, hey, he was healthy enough that he could protect himself. That's always the thing coming off an injury. A guy's got to be able to play effectively but also protect himself, and he was ready to go and chomping at the bit, so we gave him an opportunity, and he played well when he got the, his opportunity. Along with that strength and depth at running back, one of the position areas that we're seeing really emerge this season has been your receiving core. You had five different players catch at least two passes against the Hornets. That was an area that we thought would, would possibly be a little thin, especially after losing Clive Georges in week one. But that group has really stepped up as the season's gone on. They really have. And, you know, we challenge those guys to be good as a group. And, you know, Josh Seibel gets his first catch of the year. Damon Mercer coming on as a transfer, you know, feeling more and more comfortable in the system every day. It was a 27 to nothing game at the half. You continued to extend that lead in the third quarter. You mentioned running the football so effectively in the second half was a big part of this. This is the first game that you've had that wasn't decided by one score. It's got to feel like that progression that this team is making is, is really starting to see that on the field. Sure, and everything's a learning situation. You know, we w still have things we can work on and improve, mm -hmm. and we were disappointed in the second half. We started out with a penalty and a turnover, which, you know, just isn't the way you want to start that second half with a lead. So was our focus where it needs to be? We would say not. Yeah. So those are the things that we can keep improving on and make our football team better and better. Yeah, not to nitpick on some things, but that um, some special teams things, maybe just one of the areas that didn't quite grade out as well as you would have liked. Uh, muffed punts, you had a, a penalty, as you mentioned, on a kick return that ended up going for a touchdown that got called back. There a few things like that that just didn't quite go your way. What are some things that you need to work on in that area that usually is so solid for you? Well, we need to be solid in the kicking game. We left four points out on the field, and especially the ones early in the game, you know, those can change change a game in a hurry and come back to haunt you in the fourth quarter and then the penalties that are for lack of discipline 
they just need to be eliminated and we are working on that daily and we talk to our guys and address those situations but overall a fine performance yeah. but you know you can always keep getting better and better yeah certainly a fine performance 40 to 7 a big win perfect still in the big sky now four straight games that you've won in the season uh, looking ahead to this week, you get the defending Big Sky champs now coming to your place for homecoming. It's a Southern Utah team that has a new coach, but one that was in that system the last couple of seasons on the defensive side of the football. You didn't play these guys last year, but what is your read on this Thunderbird team? Well, this is a very good football team, and we're going to be challenged to get a positive result. You know, we think they're really stout up front on defense and the D-line and the linebackers, and they're very hard to run the football, you know, and we know we want to run the football. So that's going to be a key matchup in the game. And, Offensively, very explosive. Their tailbacks and receiving core have scored from 70 yards, 60 yards, 80 yards. And, you know, so we've got to eliminate explosive plays from their offense, you know, because that's where they'll gain some confidence and gain momentum in the game. You mentioned it is homecoming. Uh, you are obviously one of the biggest advocates for trying to pack the Alaris Center. Here's another chance. Give a pitch to why people should be at that game this Saturday. Well, it's for the lead in the Big Sky Conference, and we got the defending champs coming to town, and this is an opportunity for our fans to make a difference. We've had great atmospheres in our first two home games, but it sure would be great to see the Alaris Center filled this Saturday. Yeah, back-to-back -back games with 10,000 people in attendance. You'd love to see it just bump up to 12 and be a fully packed building coming up. Well, hey, Coach, best of luck there in this game against Southern Utah this weekend. We'll talk about it with you next week. All right, thank you very much. Bubba Schweigert. When we come back, we'll switch over to UND Volleyball as Mark Pryor joins us in studio. Stick around. Welcome back and welcome home again to Mark Pryor, head coach for the University of North Dakota Volleyball Program, who's right now enjoying your first real home stand of the season since the opening weekend. you got to be loving life right now. It's nice. It's really nice that the kids can kind of get in the pattern. Uh, they can get caught up and even ahead in some of their classes. It's nice for me to be home. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got to go to one of my son's Cub Scout meetings last night, which was really great. <laughs> so, you know, I actually get to be part of a family for a little yeah. while during the season. So. Little, little extra family time is yes. always a good thing. It also helps that you've been in the win call <laughs> more often than not. It's, it, that's got to be a huge thing. That this makes time. it a little better in, over in the Betty and a little better home as well. I'm not going to lie. Entering <laughs> this past week, you'd won four of your last five atop the big, a very crowded Big mm -hmm. Sky standings, but certainly at the, at the top of that. You'd have a chance to solidify that spot at the top with a pair of matches, starting with a really good contest against Sacramento State. Uh, Sacramento State's a great team, and uh, it's one of those matches that could have gone either way. Um, we hit exceptionally well. We were really, really diverse with our offense, uh, and every one of our starters really produced offensively. So it was nice. Yeah, this was a kind of a classic back and forth, even match all the way through. In the end, your balance ends up really being the difference. You had five kids with double digit kills. I know that's kind of the MO of this mm -hmm. team to spread that out. It's nice to have that kind of talent across the board to do something. It, like it that. really is. We could, you know, we could set Chelsea and Faith all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but sooner or later, people are going to figure that out. Uh, what we've tried to do is they probably could have some more swings. Uh, we think long term, if we can get Julia and Tamara and Ashley going as well, then it just makes us uh, a lot more difficult to scout when you've got five really good kids that can score. Sac State pushed you to a fifth set for just the fourth time this season mm -hmm. you played five. You were one and two in five set matches mm -hmm. coming into this one. Uh -huh. You get the job done though, 15, 13. What was the difference in this one? Uh, the difference in this one was um, I didn't screw it up. Uh, <laughs> we were up 13, 10. And um, I should have called the timeout a little sooner. I waited till it was 13 all, and I told the kids, I go, guys, hey, that's on me. I go, it won't happen again, yeah. you know, because you don't get to, to carry those timeouts over to the next match. Right, right. So we were, uh, we were, we were pleased with the result. Yeah, you get the big win. That was the first loss for the Hornets in conference play this season. You mm -hmm. move on to Saturday and you play up another good team <laughs> from the South in Portland mm -hmm. State. Their team was reeling maybe a little bit, a couple of losses coming in, mm -hmm. and you kept the pressure on them right off the bat. We did. Um, they got one outside hitter who has really uh, been scoring a lot. She's been averaging four and a half kills a set. Uh, we played four sets and we held her to 10 kills for the entire match. They held their other outside to five kills uh, for the entire match. Took sets one and two, both 25-19. Mm -hmm. Set three, you mentioned after the game that the offense kind of tailed off a little bit. What was the difference since that, set, that third set? You know, it's one of those things. Um, we've kind of, it's a bit of a trend. We're getting up 2-0 on some teams. Mm -hmm and uh, there's not quite that urgency that we need. Uh, at some point, it's gonna bite us. So 
I think for us, if we can learn that lesson um, without having to learn that lesson, I, I think it'd be pretty nice for us. Defense kind of ends up being, though, the highlight of the day. Uh, Olivia Frazee has a career high 33 digs. Tamara Marcelli picks up her seventh double double of the season's earned your second straight defensive Big Sky Player of the Week nod. Faith Dooley had, I want to get this right, 11 kills, 10 total blocks. That defensive mindset is really catching on here in this You know, team. it is one of those things that I've tried to get us to be more offensive and more offensive. Um, but what it comes down to is you got to be who you are. Yeah. And uh, I know I joke with one of the kids, I go, I don't want to lead the league in digs per set this year. And we talked about that in March and April of last year. Well, dang it, we're doing That's it again. Exactly what you're doing. So it's one of those that we find said, okay, look, this is just how we're going to play. This is who we are. Let's enjoy it. Let's embrace it. Uh, it makes for longer rallies. It mm -hmm. makes for um, fun for the fans. Uh, a little more stressful for me, sure. but that's just how it's going to be, I guess. You've now won four straights, six of your last seven. You get a couple of Montana schools mm -hmm. coming in this week and another good challenge for your team, mm -hmm. but a challenge you get to face at home. Right. Uh, you know, we're going to finish the first half of league this week. If we can play well, we've got a really good opportunity to, um, to finish seven and one. Mm. Uh, that's great because afterward, the last half of conference is pretty brutal. So we're really looking forward to, to playing well at home. Uh, homecoming weekend is always great. Uh, but doing our part to take care of home court advantage. Yeah, well, two more big ones this week, Coach. Best of luck there, and then best of luck hitting the road in the future, okay? Great, thank you. Mark Pryor. When we come back, we're going to talk with Brian Adolski. You and the women's hockey is coming up next. Welcome back. We're excited to welcome back into our studio for another season the head coach of the University of North Dakota women's hockey team, Brian Adolski. And Brian, we appreciate you joining us. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks, Alex. Good to be here. A couple of weeks now into the season, four games under your belts, uh, a couple of road trips really to get things rolling. How have you felt the team has performed so far this year? Actually, I have been happy with uh, the way that we've competed. I think, uh, you know, execution wise for a young group as uh, been definitely a step in the right direction. Our special teams have been good and uh, Lexi Shaw has been outstanding for us. So some encouraging signs as we build and get going here. Yeah, started the season off in Erie, Pennsylvania, a couple of games, non-conference against Mercyhurst, a 3-1 win and a 1-1 tie. You mentioned special teams. That was key in that series. Three power play goals. You stopped them 14 of 14 times on the penalty kill. Was that something you put a little extra focus in coming into this season? Oh, we knew going into the year that uh, special teams can really help win you games early on. Generally, things are sloppy, and uh, we knew refereeing-wise, uh, they were going to uh, put crack down standard of play and some mm -hmm. of the obstruction. So we figured uh, we'd get a special teams game, and that's exactly what happened. Going on the road early, maybe a good chance for your team to gel together on these road trips. Do you think that helped a little bit to get the team chemistry figured out on the on the uh, road to Pennsylvania? Well, we have so many uh, younger kids, and we have so many spots uh, that people have to step into to produce for us. And so to face some adversity, go through that travel, and, and that's a tough travel, uh, getting into Erie, Pennsylvania. Um, I thought our kids responded well in refereeing and the road, and I, I thought we did a great job there, and I was really encouraged by that. Second road trip of the season, a little closer to home. You go right into conference play against St. Cloud last weekend. You got a 1-0 win on Friday. Uh, that was a game, again, where you mentioned Lexi shot earlier, an outstanding performance by her second career shutout. She makes a bunch of big saves, and you guys get the W. Yeah, and again, I thought uh, we were in control of play. I thought we did a nice job all the way around, and. Uh, you know, it was really encouraging. A lot of kids uh, playing, a lot of younger kids getting good minutes, and so uh, it was a solid uh, road win for us. Yeah, and that Friday night game against St. Cloud, your lone goal came on a shorthanded goal from Amy Menke. She's now tops all time with six shorthanded goals in her career. She's a special player, obviously, for you, an all conference kid from a season ago. What about her? skill set lends to being so effective in four and five situations? Well, I just think she's so explosive. I think uh, the fact that, uh, you know, she's so quick and uh, basically that's what it was. It was a bouncing puck and uh, she took off and blew by one D and the other D took a, a poor angle and, and she was gone and off to the races. So I uh, really, uh, penalty kill wise, that just gives us a nice dimension that people have to be attention to her. If they make a mistake, she can take it the other way in a hurry. Um, got the one nothing win on Friday. Saturday you fall three to two. Your first loss of the season. It was a game where you outshot St. Cloud thirty seven to fourteen, but they made those shots count in the end. Hey, yeah, uh, you know we got uh, Kristen Campbell some experience, and I uh, didn't think by any means that it was her fault. But uh, you know uh, the way offensively we we're cycling, all four lines were playing and dominating. Uh, it was a little disappointing. We had some chances to put them away in the second period. 
uh, didn't do it. They got a goal late and then came out in the third and kind of finished it off. So we talked a, a fair amount about uh, that and being a little more uh, aggressive to finish off some plays, but uh, the fact that we are executing at the level we were, and really we had 69 attempted shots and, and they had mm -hmm. 24. Uh, we were uh, happy with some of the things we were doing. We thought it was a positive, obviously a little disappointed in the outcome. Sure. Well, despite the loss, still 2-1-1 one, one through four games this season, still ranked in the top 10 nationally, and now you come home for 12 of your next 13. That's a heck of a home stretch coming up. You do play some of the best teams in the nation over that stretch, but it got to be nice to get back to the Ralph in front of your home fans. Well, I think for our younger kids, you know, they haven't, uh, our freshmen haven't played a game yet uh, in the Ralph, so uh, that experience and uh, that kind of energy will be uh, very interesting, but there's no doubt with that kind of home string, we've got to win a, a lot of games here because the second half's uh, flipped on that, so it's a big homestand for us. Yeah, well, we're excited to see this team in person starting this Friday and Saturday against Minnesota State. Coach, best of luck in those matches. We'll talk to you about it down the road. Sounds good. Thanks, well, Brian Adalski. When we come back, we're going to wrap things up here on UND Sports Extra. Stick around. UND Sports Extra on Midco Sports Network is presented by Farmers Union Insurance and the University of North Dakota. It is homecoming week at UND and for good reason as there is a full slate of games and matches in Grand Forks across North Dakota athletics. Volleyball, swimming and diving, cross country, soccer, women's and men's hockey and football all home this week. So you've got options to catch the Fighting Hawks in person or here on Midco SN as this Saturday we've got a doubleheader of live UND sports on the schedule. North Dakota football takes on defending Big Sky champ Southern Utah at 1 p.m. while UND men's hockey hosts RPI of the ECAC in the nightcap at 7 p.m. We hope you join us for both live games this Saturday and next Tuesday for another edition of UND Sports Extra. Until then, I'm Alex Heinert. Thanks for watching.